The Gambia, as of 2020, records about 4,400 refugees, of which over 3,000 are from the Cosmas region of Senegal. According to UNHCR, the refugee population in the country consists of Senegalese, who are the highest, followed by Sierra Leoneans, Ivorians, Congolese and others. Considered to be one of the most refugee-friendly countries in West Africa, the Gambia is home to approximately 2 million people. Most of its refugees flee their countries for numerous reasons, the predominant of which is war and conflict. The UNHCR has been working with partner institutions like GAFNA in ensuring refugees are treated in line with international standards, according them the respect and support needed for their integration in society. Aisha Fatim is a refugee from Togo who came to the Gambia in 2006 after the 2005 conflict in her home country. I used to see on TV the way Gambians are making this thing I like Gambia and after the problem starts, they are killing people, doing all those things, we don't know where to run to and we decided to come to Gambia. After setting up her fruits and vegetable business with the support from Gafna, she now employs two young people who work with her. However, business is at a standstill due to the global pandemic, which has very much affected her source of income and livelihood. I know that all this world, everybody's suffering, but at least if you, I'm a Gambian, I have my people here, at least if I not get it in my uncle's place, I will get it in my auntie's place. But we don't have it here. All the governments we are waiting for to do something for our lives. The same applies to Merde, an Ivorian who came to seek refuge in the Gambia in 2006 after realizing it's far from his hometown, Ivory Coast, which was experiencing civil unrest at the time. He was also able to start a mini ice cream business with support from Gavna before expanding to a business of four outlets across the Carnifing municipality and the West Coast region. Merde employs about 12 people who are currently at home due to the fact that he has to pause his business amid the global pandemic. Because every day I've pay, I'm paying at least 500 cash power from the shop uh, to save all the stuff. But I cannot do that anymore, so I have to throw all the ice and uh, uh, the ice cream and the ice I produce. I have to throw everything away, so it goes all to $40,000 I lost from all this. Look at this, uh, the, the freezer, everything is empty, nothing inside. He also told us that expenses have now increased on his part because his children are not going to school. He has four shops he has to pay rent for. Therefore, he has to tap into his capital because he's running out of savings. The question is, where will he start from once this whole pandemic subsides? Our quest to see the real condition of refugees in the Gambia leads us to Sibanor in Foni, where we met other refugees, including Ansu. He is originally from Kozamaz. Ansu tells us he's been living peacefully with his hosts and has since tried to look into various means of earning a living. He runs a poultry farm. However, Ansu faces the brunt of storage facility, which sometimes leads to the stealing of his products. <laughs> Part of the chicken is for our own consumption, part of it too is kept for the markets. But our problem is, when the chickens are grown enough to hatch, they develop so much grease that when they are not sold early, they can easily die. And this is the exact reason why Governor decided to apply for funding at the American Embassy to build a poultry processing and storage plant, which will serve the purpose of helping the refugees maximize their profit while being innovative in their dealings. This is to be able to uh, take care of the marketing problems of some individual poultry farmers, refugee poultry farmers that we have uh, helped around this area, so that uh, when their birds are ready for for sale, they can easily bring it here, slaughter it, and uh, get it processed and stored for, for marketing. We will gain profit from it, and also we'll employ our fellow refugees to work in this processing plant, for them to, to gain something for their own families. Ansu now hopes to generate more income after diversifying his farming activities by grooming a horse and donkey to help him in granite production. With the support of his wife, they are able to pull through life's hurdles despite unforeseen circumstances. 
The story is not so different from Kadi Bojang, also a refugee from Cosmos, who started with a business in Patik. COVID-19 has disrupted major contracts for her, limiting her routine to Senegal, where she has developed a good customer base. There was one association that requested for my service. I made more than 100 fabrics and even became indebted to my supplier, who supplies me with the raw material. Now, due to this pandemic, the clothes are stuck in Casamas. Kadi's hope is to move from a mud house into a well concrete building. She has already started molding bricks, hoping that dream will come to reality. I want my own house. That's what I want to build and live in it together with my family. I want to be free. COVID-19 could devastate refugees, migrants and internally displaced populations without urgent action. Advocates believe public health response to the pandemic should reach the most vulnerable, including refugees, migrants and those who are internally displaced. We normally give them support through caste-based intervention, but this particular one is going to be on an emergency basis. Look at those ones who are very vulnerable, those ones who cannot you know, adequately move around to get food. Food is very important because uh, it's important that they also have something to keep them in their homes. With the refugees hoping to see light at the end of the tunnel, an undisputed fact is that they are so much in need of assistance, especially in the area of essential services. If there's one thing we've learned from all these stories, is the power of peaceful coexistence, which of course breeds a social cohesion. One thing is certain is that as a human race, the most important thing is love and support. And refugees need that, especially during these trying times of a global pandemic. For Giatis News in Sikon, here in Funi Bintankara Nai District, Fatu Eli Kamuloshi.